If you like the video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Today, we're gonna to talk about diffusion. We'll look at how to use it, what are the different types, and how to make it out of household material. Welcome to Pull My Focus, Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we give you the inside tips you need to make great video. What is diffusion? The technical definition, the action of spreading the light from a light source evenly so as to reduce glare and harsh shadows. But first, we need to talk about why do we want to diffuse light in the first place? Where can we get an answer? One place is in the beautiful world around us. So here, for example, I'm in my wonderful dining room and I have sunlight hitting white curtains that would normally be coming through my windows. So those curtains are a big, soft source of light for my key light. The only actual light I have turned on is a light box I have over here over the camera. I'm gonna turn that off. And so now I'm only lit by natural light. The sunlight on the curtains and then that light spread and reflected off of all the white walls in this room all diffuse light, no direct light at all. So one answer is to recreate the diffuse light that we see everywhere in the world around us. Light coming in through a white curtain, reflected light coming in from a room through a doorway. And why? Because we like the effect and or we want lighting that fits the geographic situation our subject is in in that scene. So how do we create diffuse light? Well, one popular theory I've seen is to just, you know, put light through white diffusion and it's diffuse. But here's the thing, diffusion material doesn't actually change the actual rays of light uh, coming through it. It just creates a wider source of more scattered light. The size of your light relative to your subject determines how diffuse the light is. You see, light from a small light comes from one direction. It therefore creates harsh shadows. It's what we call a point source. But if we shine that same light through a wide piece of diffusion, in this case, it's uh, the silk from my five-in-one uh, bounce reflector, we now have a wider source of light relative to the subject. Light from the center of the silk, the edges, all around it, is illuminating the subject more than a small point source of light does. It therefore is filling in its own shadows. Now, if diffusion doesn't change the quality of the actual light waves, why do some people double up on diffusion? There are even soft boxes with an extra layer of diffusion inside before it hits the outer layer of diffusion. I've even had people tell me it doubles the softness of the light rays because it's becoming soft and then going through another piece of diffusion to be even softer. No, remember, the actual rays of light themselves aren't changed. We're just creating a wider source of light relative to our subject. So why double up? Let's look at that silk again. You'll notice a hot spot where we can kind of see the bulb a little bit that's illuminating it. That means our diffusion frame as a diffuse light source is uneven. Our subject will be lit less evenly by it. Now, that's not always a problem, but if you want really even soft light, adding an additional layer of diffusion between our light source and our frame helps us spread out the light from the light source more evenly across our frame and creating an, a more even diffuse 
large, soft source. Another way to create an even spread on our diffusion is with what we call a book light. We bounce light into a white card that's at an angle to our diffusion frame. Here I'm using a sheet of Lee 216 diffusion. The setup kind of looks like an open book and it helps us to get a more even spread on our diffusion frame. Now doubling up our diffusion, bouncing and all that, and any kind of diffusion does eat up light. Um, and it can eat up anywhere from one to one and a half to two stops and sometimes even more. So we need to take that into account. In the film biz, there are basically three types of diffusion. There's silks, gels, and bounces. Silk material is really nylon, and you'll find it on uh, silk flags of all the various sizes up to four by, and also on eight, 12, and 20 by frames. Uh, you can buy the material um, online. I'll put a link in the description below. You can also use the silk frames that come up in those five-in-one kits like I'm using. I like to use the round one for with my LED PAR bulbs, and I like to use the bigger oblong version with my fluorescents. Rig them in a grip stand, or you can use this trusty little device to put them on, uh, to hang them on the light stand. Gels on a film set are generally rolls. They're four feet wide by 25 feet long. They're usually uh, cut off to be taped to 4x4 open frames uh, and other uses. Rolls are wonderful, but expensive. What's the alternative? Gel sheets. They come usually in 21 by 22 inch squares, but you can also get 10 by 10 versions as well. You can buy them at your local video or camera store uh, or online. Ask for a gel book if you can, like this. Uh, they're super helpful. They show all the different kinds of diffusion as well as gels and even reflective material put out by either Lee or Roscoe or some of the most popular. But this begs the question, there's so many different types of diffusion, which ones do we use? Basically, first off, there are two types, opaque and frost. Opaques are thick enough that you can't see through them and are perfect for creating uh, wide diffuse sources. The most common and popular uh, that I've seen is Lee 216. It's pretty much on every gr uh, grip electric truck that's out there. Frosts are more transparent. Think a very thin layer of clouds where you can see the orb of the sun or light coming through a frosted window. The shape and beam of the light is still intact, but the edges are softened and diffused. Opal in Hampshire are the more popular uh, type of frost gels that are out there. Um, you can use them on people, but where they're really good is when you have a spotted light uh, on a back wall and you don't want harsh edges, you want to soft the edges of that light. Now bouncing light is a form of diffusion, right? You're scattering the light and creating a wider source. All of the light, except for this reflector in this room, is diffuse light bouncing off the walls. Now we can create our own bounce with a two by three piece of show card, putting light into it. Now you may be used to using a collapsible frame to bounce uh, daylight or sunlight softly into your subject on an exterior shoot. You can use that same bounce inside. The advantage of industry produced gels and material is that um, they can handle the heat, especially when closed pinned to the barn doors of a very hot tungsten light. But with LEDs today and other low heat generating lights like uh, full spectrum fluorescence, um, heat's just really not that much of an issue. I've used an extra curtain from my IKEA Ritva curtains here on my windows for a diffusion frame. They're $10 for a pair. You can also use uh, tracing paper, um, the, basically the same kind of paper that is used to wrap china lanterns. And yes, you can use china lanterns as well. I prefer only to use them in really big rooms with high ceilings so that I can get them up there uh, and that's to boost the ambient level in a room when I need it. And as I mentioned, you can buy silk material. I got this on Amazon um, for a little over seven bucks and it's a yard wide by 60 inches long. You can also use the popular low budget diffusion of choice used by the indie world of forever, shower curtain. Yep, shower.
It was so popular back in the day that they, you could actually buy gel sheets that were actually called shower curtains, that were simulating shower curtains. The curtains used are generally the, uh, uh, the liner ones and they come in two flavors, the opaque, the 216-like, or the frosted, like opal. Now, I only use the opaque, the 216-like, because if I'm using a shower curtain, it's because I want a really big, uh, wide light source. And a frosted one, well, it's keeping the beam shape. I'm not filling the whole thing, so what's the point? One item we didn't get into is containing all of that spill bouncing off of your diffusion and coming out from the sides of your light all over your set. On a film set, they'll use a 4x4 a diffusion frame and they'll have 4x4 solids on the sides, the top, sometimes even the bottom. But on smaller sets with less crew and maybe even smaller actual sets, soft boxes to the rescue. They not only contain the spill all inside the box, but the reflective material also helps push all of the light forward and therefore help uh, create a more even spread for our diffusion. Now, this only touches on the main types of diffusion. We didn't get into grid cloth or big 20 by 20 silks. We'll definitely get into uh, that in future episodes. Very interesting and fun stuff. But if you play with these forms of diffusion that we just covered, you'll be fine. Shoot tests play around with different types of diffusion in different uh, situations, try to recreate shots that you see in the real world with your lights and uh, post them and we would love to see them. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out pullmyfocus.tv for the companion articles that go along with our videos. And if you find what we're doing helpful and informative, consider backing us on Patreon. With a small monthly pledge, you're investing in our ability to continue bringing you inside tips on how to make great video. So thank you.